If all right, go, go. From Hollywood. What does that mean? It's the Tom Likas Show. I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. Oh, no. We'll do it live. And now. And now. Here he is. Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. Let me read to you from one of my favorite websites, eHarmony.com. Was sent by a listener. <laughs> by the way, speaking of eHarmony.com, have you uh, gotten this uh, things being passed around the internet? Uh, somebody apparently, uh, somebody apparently uh, tried to uh, fill out the questionnaire of twenty-nine levels of compatibility. Freeharmony.com. <laughs> and they were rejected. This is another one where I can't tell you. I can't tell you the punchline. But um, the person um, who had attempted to uh, pass uh, through the uh, questionnaire at eHarmony.com did not make it through did not um, become a member of eHarmony.com because they incorrectly uh, answered uh, question number 14. And question number 14 was, what do you like most in a woman? Now, it says here what the acceptable answer would not be. But I can't. <laughs> I can't tell you what it is. Can you possibly guess? All right, in about 10 minutes, I'll post it on our MySpace, just in case you can't guess. <laughs> just, I had to pass that along to you, I'm sorry. Anyway, from eHarmony.com, a, a story written by one of their columnists is called Why a Man Won't Emotionally Commit. And here it is. The subhead on the piece says, In the early stages of dating, he's attentive, affectionate, and then you sense a drift. Suddenly, he seems distant and withdrawn. Read on for the reasons behind this behavior. And then the column. One of the most common situations women ask me about is what I call predictable male withdrawal. I'll take a second to explain exactly what this is and why it's important. In the early stages of dating, a man is often attentive, affectionate, and willing to do anything to stay close to you. He talks about his life, his feelings, and wants to know everything about you. He wants to make sure you have incredible experiences together. But then it happens. At some point, you sense a shift in him. His openness and curiosity fades. Wouldn't it be fade? He rarely wants to talk about your feelings or the relationship. He seems distant and withdrawn. You worry about it and wonder suddenly... Why, you're the only one who cares about the relationship. Unfortunately, pointing this out to him only adds to the tension and distance you feel. There's a hard truth about most men when it comes to dating. A man either won't tell you or doesn't know himself whether or not he is a withdrawer in relationships. For example, a man would never say to a woman, I'm looking for a committed relationship. But the truth is that I'm not 100% emotionally available. I'll put you on an emotional roller coaster by periodically pulling away from you. But hey, want to go out sometime? <laughs> Part of the beauty of online dating and eHarmony, says eHarmony, is that you're able to get a rich sense of the man you're connecting with before you meet in person. 
<laughs> but there's one more important thing you'll want to know. Whether or not he'll grow to be more loving as the relationship grows, or if he'll be the kind of man that periodically gets distant, therefore bringing up all your fears and uncertainty. By the way, bringing up all her fears and uncertainty, if you're a guy, that's the perfect thing to do. Keep her on her toes. Keep her in doubt. Never let her take you for granted. E-Harmony will never tell you that. <laughs> Says here, the best way to know a man's emotional habits and relationships is to look at his existing relationships. Is he close to his family and friends? What does he say about them? Is he loving and supportive of them? Or is he constantly negative and dismissive of them? There's a lot you can tell about a man by simply listening and observing. So what if you're already with a withdrawer? Withdrawer. <laughs> Follow these tips to keep your sanity. Tip one, avoid falling into the common role of the convincer. When you sense a man is less available to you and it scares you, the common reaction is to unconsciously convince a man to stay and open up emotionally. This usually shows up as subtle begging, whining, or pouting in order to change his behavior. Unfortunately, these are the exact kinds of behaviors that seem needy to a withdrawn man and cause him to want to pull away more. Number two, keep your center. The quickest way to connect with someone, especially a man, is to be the kind of positive, magnetic person that they can't help but be changed and inspired by. When we feel uncertain and worried, we often put more attention and focus on the problems we see. But as the saying goes, sometimes the best medicine is laughter. Try to look at problems in your relationship as opportunities for love, growth, and understanding. To in and maintain a positive attitude, you have to have a full life, with or without a man. Don't stop doing the things that make you feel great about yourself and your life. And tip number three, lead with attraction. Talking about your relationship issues will never change a man. What does change him is the magic power of attraction. Remember what drew you to him in the first place. It's not just physical attraction, but emotional attraction that creates a strong, unbreakable bond between you and a man. There you go. That's, that's the whole column. Sounds like it was truncated at the end there. But let me tell you why men remain emotionally uncommitted. It's because we want to get laid and we feel in the beginning if we show you some attention and we feel if we take you out and tell you how important you are to us, that will mean more and more and better sex. And then when you actually start to try to collect on the promise, then we withdraw. There's no mystery to it. The best way to avoid this situation is just have friends with benefits. <laughs> Seriously. You see, what women want is they want a guy who is a nice guy, but by the same token, when they get a nice guy, they are bored with him. Women like guys who are enigmas. Those of us who pretend to be interested, then we act like we're not interested, then we're interested, then we're not interested, then we call, then we stop calling. These are the guys who get dates. And the men who are reliable, dependable, loving, caring, remembering your birthday, remember the anniversary of your first date three weeks ago Thursday. These are the guys who get trampled on in favor of the guys who are enigmas. There, there's, there's a pragmatic reason for being emotionally withdrawn if you're a guy. And that pragmatic reason is the more withdrawn we become, the more women fall all over us. So I'm wondering, uh, do you disagree with that? You can call here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. All right, and now uh, I'm going to log on to MySpace during this break. And I'm going to give you the uh, answer uh, to question number 14 that was rejected. And the question was, what do you like most in a woman? The answer coming to myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. Tom Likas. Like
one 800 5800 one 800 The Tom Likas Show. Show. At 1-800-5800-TOM, it's our telephone number. Oh yes, another column about why a man won't emotionally commit. <laughs> Dane is asking me to say there's no need for guys to call in and guess the answer to that question. Somebody apparently tried to uh, fill out the eHarmony questionnaire. And uh, question number 14 was, what do you most like in a woman? And then I'm looking here at uh, what was uh, considered not an acceptable answer, but um, I can't say what it was, so I posted it on MySpace. No need to take Dean's time trying to guess the answer. Just go to MySpace.com slash Tom Likas, and you'll see it. MySpace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. There it is. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. We're talking about the men who won't emotionally commit. Let's say hello here to Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Tom, how you doing? Okay. Great. Hey, now my, my take on the situation is what a lot of guys do is they all they want to do is be with the girl. They don't surf. They don't hang out with their buddies. They just want to be with them all the time. And that's great. They're having a great time. After a month or so, they go, you know, hey, I don't do any of the things I used to do. And they, so they start pulling back because now they want to, you know, do that and still have the chick. And then the girl says, hey, this isn't what I signed up for. I want you here all the time. And you want to go surf? You crazy? And that's it. <laughs> You're right also. Well, I think that's what it's all about. I <laughs> I do Funny. think I do think guys have no idea what they're getting into. You're right. I do think guys have no idea that uh, saying all this stuff to a chick, which is generally just to get laid, exactly, ultimately ends up being, uh, oh my god, uh, <laughs> now what have I done to myself? Right. So then they want, you know, then that's why they pull back. It's nothing wrong with a the girl. They just, like you say, in the beginning of a relationship, what you do is how you set the the pace for it. Like if you spend too much money or you spend too much time with them, keep living your life the way you want to live it and spend time with her when you want. But don't stop any of the other things and you'll be fine. I agree with you, which, by the way, the column, as you saw, it tells women to do that, but not men. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Gus on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Uncle Tom, long time, first time. Thank you, Gus. Um, I had just a quick comment. You know, I've been going out with this girl now for about six months. I totally uh, botched the six-month anniversary. I canceled. I didn't know all that. Anyway, um, when I found out that I, I don't remember and I don't, um, I'm not on top of it and I don't call back and text back right away, actually the girl's interest peaks a little bit more. However, if you, if you go too long, then you're going to have to deal with talking about the relationship forever which is also a nightmare. So you, it's absolutely true what you said. I agree with you, but you have to kind of – it's an ebb and flow kind of thing. Um, and then at the, at the same time, if you withdraw too much, it becomes a big problem because you end up having to talk about the relationship the whole time, which is a nightmare. I refuse to do it. It's um, – you know, if you, withdrawing completely and shutting down, then – if, and then the girl kind of the girl's kind of obsessed about it is what I found about trying to talk and I say hey look our time is limited we have only a little bit so I don't want to talk about the relationship the whole time let's do something fun let's do something physical instead of just talking about it well uh, I, I I do know that what guys sometimes do is they throw a little uh, carrot out there and then they stomp on it Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I think, Tom, what you said about nice guys, I think that there are, you know, I, I try to, uh, I am a nice guy. However, I found that 
you know, girls say they want that, but then it's not it's not how it works. They want a guy who's dangerous, a little who's a little bit withdrawn, who doesn't give a damn at times, and and uh, that's 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 what I have to say. That's who I am. I don't give a crap. Well, you know, you have to like uh, it's it's a, this cat and mouse game, and it is a game, and it's uh, but there are some times, especially around the holidays, Tom. I found too that. Girl, and, and right before Valentine's Day, too, these girls want to stay in relationships just to stay. Uh, you know, the holidays are a stressful time. Uh, there's, uh, there's, uh, you know, there's a need for, for, for them to be in a relationship, to feel loved, and all that stuff. So these, there's times where in there, it's, it's a little bit easier uh, than others. But uh, in any case, Tom, thanks for having me on. Can you take me out uh, machine gun style, please? Yes. Yes, I can. It's one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom Ray on the Tom Likas show. Hello, hello, uh, Tom. How you doing? Great. <laughs> um, so what I was going to say is that when guys are dating, most of the time, mature women are going to want zero <laughs> zero tolerance policy. Yeah, the BS word. It's one of the words you can't say without me hanging up on you. Got to learn to curb that. I curb it every day. You have to curb it when you call in. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. While you're at MySpace looking up the punchline to today's joke, uh, you might also look at the blog uh, about all the words you can't say on the air. I wrote it myself with my own hand. You can see how I typed out the F word and the S word. I taped them out nice and neatly so you can read all of them. You just go there and read up there. It's myspace.com slash Tom Likas. That's myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Alex on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Alex. What's up, cracking man? No, no. You're Alex. Yeah, I'm Alex. You called me Alex. No, I didn't. I said, uh, yeah, my name's Alex. I said, I was... I'll say no. What's cracking, Tom? That's, well, that's not what you said, but somebody yeah, somebody's you. asked the minute I get out of here is what's cracking. <laughs> hey, Tom, I gotta disagree with you, man. I mean, nice guys don't always finish last. I didn't say they always do, but they mostly do. Well, I, I guess I guess you're right, but you know, I'm I'm gonna have to plead the case for the nice guy because I'm I'm kind of a medium. I'm most I'm a nice guy, and I mean, I'm willing to spend a dollar on a girl. You know, I, I've I've uh, I was actually listening to your you know, tasting with Tom on Saturday, and you're talking about the foundry. I've actually been to the foundry, spent a few dollars here and there, man, and it, it works out for me. It definitely works out for me. I get a lot of beautiful girls. You know, they give me a lot of attention, and I end up going home with them at the end of the night. It works out for me. Well, again. Uh, it would be, you haven't tried doing it without spending the money, and I'm telling you, uh, without spending the money, uh, you would have done uh, just as well. Uh, I mean, I've done it. I've done it both ways, and it, it works out. I mean, it, it works out for me, Tom. I, I mean, you know, the, the, the thing that I admire about you, Tom, is the fact that you know so much about restaurants as well. You're you're a big, you know, wine goer, and I'm sure you put that to use as well. I mean, I can't imagine you knowing all that information and not putting it to use and spending a dollar here and there. Again, um, I know from having had a history when I was younger, spending a few bucks, that I get uh, as good or better results spending as little as possible. That's you know you're, you're definitely have a point, Tom. I, I you know you, you know your way. You know I'm sure you know more than I do with all. You know you've been married quite a few times, but uh, I'd like to say thank you for having me on the air, Tom. You do a great job. I love your show. But you can take me on Bill O'Reilly style. So that'd be great. Yes, yes, I can. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. No. We'll do it live. F it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. And thing sucks. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Here's Chris on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. What's up, man? Not much, Chris. Yeah, uh, you know what, man? Like lately, I've been trying to be the nice guy. You know, from uh, my past experiences, I've uh, just been basically got everything I wanted. With the exception of uh, this beautiful thing that people call a relationship, you know? And uh, so lately I've been a nice guy, and both, within the past two months, both girls I've been talking to went back to their ex man. You know, I've taken them out to lunch or taken and them let out me to guess, dinner. And let me guess, then they called you and they said, You're such a good friend. I wanted you to be the first to know. 
totally, man. And it's like, it does not pay off to be the nice guy. You got to be the jerk. And that's how you get them home and, you know, take off their pants and let them send them on their that's way, right. I guess. I want to be the one they're complaining about for years to come. <laughs> that ain't a bad thing. I because have you, know. you ever noticed the ones they complain about for years to come? They've always gotten laid, every one of those guys. Yep, absolutely. You never hear a woman say, well, I went out on a date with a guy, and, um, well, nothing happened, but what a jerk. Exactly, yeah, no, no, not at all. It's the, it's the guys that totally act like a jerk, totally treat them like crap, and then, uh, you know, they get laid and send them on their way, and they bitch and moan about them the whole time. Oh, this guy's such a jerk. Da, 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 da. Yeah, whatever. You know, it's like they like that, and that's what they want. It's just a catch-22. I mean, when I was younger, I used to get it, whatever I wanted, you know? Attractive girls, two or three in the night, you know, a bunch of them in the, pool, in the, bull, in the bullpen. But at the same time, man, it's like you, I don't know, I'm like almost 30 years old now. You want to be cool about it and, and take them out and be nice, and it just doesn't work. Well. It does not work. Well, you're preaching to the choir here, Chris. Come like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Oh, yes. At 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Talking about a piece uh, from eHarmony.com. About why a man won't emotionally commit. No mystery there. Vanessa, love the job like your show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Great subject. Thank you. Hits home today. Very big time. Um, well, in my case, it, it might be a physical problem as far as the man not wanting to commit. Why would that have anything to do with it? Because some... I think some men realize the um, their size and maybe know that it's not going to be an everlasting, pleasurable experience, so they keep moving on to the next. Does that make any sense? Well, I don't know. I've talked to a lot of guys about these subjects, and I must say that, um, of course, no guy would ever say to another guy that that was their reason, so who knows, but... I tend to think it has more to do with the fact that uh, there are guys who simply know uh, the more available we make ourselves emotionally, the more we get stepped on. Yeah, and it's but it's, it goes it definitely goes both ways. I mean, I was a crying pathetic girl, and you know, if I'm too nice, I get walked on too. It definitely goes both ways. You know, it's nobody wants to commit to somebody that's unstable and unhealthy, and it makes them feel bad. Regardless if you're a man or a woman, you know, it, it goes both ways. And the truth of the matter is, is all women, all women, I don't care how perfect they say they are or try to be, we all have a bit of crazy in us. It could, could be different and vary to, you know, in different degrees as to why we're all crazy, but we all have it in us. And it just depends on the guy how much he's going to take, you know, because every person has it in them to to be unhealthy and, and unstable. Thank you, Vanessa. Appreciate the call. Lauren on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm really excited to talk to you. I've been listening to you since I was eight. I love that. <laughs> My mom used to make me listen to you, and I was just listening to you right now, driving down to L.A., and I have to say I totally agree with you. Do tell. Well, um, obviously, I'm 24, and I've obviously dated some guys and have lots of girlfriends. And, you know, it's true. Like, the more the more the guy is nice to you, you totally put them in the friend category. And then when a guy doesn't show you the attention, you kind of want the attention to. You go for that guy. He doesn't show it to you because that's what you want. You want what you can't have. That's right. So <laughs> you've taught us, all of you have taught us, to be the guy you can't have. Exactly. And it works for girls, too. The more unavailable you are, the more the guy wants you. Well, I know that's true because here's what has frequently happened in my own life over the years. While I was uh, making myself unavailable to a variety of women who kept having sex with me just to get me to be closer to them, there would be one girl I'd be moaning after who'd be doing the same thing to me. Exactly. And that's when you get the men, ladies. So that adds another element to it because... 
One of the reasons I was emotionally unavailable to others is because there was someone I wanted who was unavailable to me. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's how it works. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Steven on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's happening, Tom? Not much, Steven. You know, it's, it's, the guy's got to play, you got to get a feel for it. I mean, every girl is not the same, but you always got to be an a-hole a little bit just to keep them coming back for more. As soon as you give in, as soon as they feel like they attained what they got, what they wanted, it's over. They're on to the next guy. Yeah. I mean, I um, I have found being a jerk has, has always worked for me. Uh, I get a lot of criticism from women for saying that and for living my life that way. But these women aren't dating me, so what do I care? No, it's completely true. Yeah, you know, the ones who date me, uh, they uh, show me their approval by continuing to tolerate the way I treat them. Yeah, the best situation for a guy to learn is when uh, when the girl has an ex that was a real a hole, and they think that they're done with it and they want to move on. Then they find the nice guy, and you're the nice guy. So you treat them nice, you take them to dinner, you tell them you love them, you buy them flowers, and then you find out that she's been seeing the ex behind your back because she, he's the one treating her, you know, like like dirt. And she keeps going back then. Meanwhile, you're doing all the lovey-dovey stuff, and you're getting screwed for it. That is exactly right. Thank you for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Jason on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Jason. Hey, listen. So here's here's my deal. Um, I've been seeing this one girl. Okay, she was she was with this one guy for a long time. They broke up. Then I get in the mix. I... The reason the reason I got in the mix is I was a jerk to her, and you know she found that attractive. Now she's back with that guy because I never asked her to be with me or anything. She's back with that guy. They're going to get married, and I'm still hooking up with her. But the thing is, now if I'm a jerk, then I'm just I'm just he's a nice guy now. And if I'm the jerk, now I just look like a jerk, but it's not cool anymore. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so it seems like I'm still, you know, I'm still hitting it, but I have to whisper the sweet nothings to her. That's well, as long like as she's married to someone else, uh, there's no harm. It's it's like having a piece of red meat and holding it in front of a a, a Rottweiler who's caged in with a chain link fence. <laughs> now it seems like I have to be the nice guy to get what I want. And so, you know, I don't think nice guys always finish. Well, last. that's because she married the jerk. <laughs> All right. Who she will later be complaining about? That's true. That's exactly true. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. James on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, James. How you doing? Great. Uh, all right, uh, I had a I had a quick question for you. Uh, the question was like uh, about women, not why why guys aren't emotionally attached to to women. Well, I was normally the guy who always got emotionally attached. I started listening to your show about three months ago in college. Well, um, now I'm, I'm dating this chick now, and we've been dating for about three months. This chick has a kid; she's 25, but she won't let me bang her. The only time we ever go out is we we will kick it in, we'll kick it at her house, or you know, um, I'll, she'll never come to my house. I always go to her house. And we'll always hang out, but she won't let me bang her. So how do I close the deal, Tom? Did you tell Dean that this is a single mother? Yeah. You don't close the deal. I can't close the deal? No. Man. So so what I do, you just cut her loose? Single mom's out. Single mom, what, what's wrong with single moms? Sing, <laughs> single mom's already got knocked up once, and somebody's paying that child support. <laughs> well, you know, but you know what? But like, but then I, I'm a, I, I've done. I've tried to be a jerk to her. I'm a jerk to her. I'm not saying I can't, shouldn't close the deal. But like, I, I tell her I have a bullpen of chicks. But like, let mind you, this is like no, no ordinary single mom. I'm talking about double D's. She looks right, and I was trying to close the deal, but she's not allowing it. And so, you you don't think I could ever close the deal? Well, it's not whether you can close the deal. It's whether you really should want to close the deal. True. So that's you coming. don't want to be the next schmuck paying child support to her. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to just cut her loose, all right? That's what I would do. All right, then, can, you, can you take me out Kobe style? I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. 
1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. We're talking about a column on eHarmony.com called Why a Man Won't Emotionally Commit. Scott on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tommy, how are you second father? I'm doing okay, Scotty. Anyways, I'm, uh, first of all, I want to thank you. The shorter commercials are amazing, man. I've been calling for the last, you know, I've been trying to get in, been listening to you since I was like 14. And I'm, uh, you know, finally getting able to get on now. I love it. I love it. Uh, anyways, uh, you're talking about the, uh, not getting emotionally attached. What right. I see it is, um, like in high school when you're first learning how to, uh, get with girls in the first place. Um, you know, you, you're the nice guy, you're giving them, you're buying them things, you realize you're going broke, and then they walk all over you. So then uh, I think it's the women in the first place that make you realize you kind of got to be an a-hole if you're going to get with them. Because, uh, you know, they, they, they walk all over you if you're the nice guy. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, I mean, I mean, once you uh, realize you got to treat them, uh, you know, they got, you got to be the guy they com they're complaining about to all the other nice guys. Then you get what you want. I think you're absolutely right. Thanks for the call. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Cliff on the Tom Likas show. Hey, uh, how you doing, Tom? Doing okay. Thanks, Sam, man. Um, all right. I completely agree with you. I didn't until recently. Uh, I was, uh, it was recently my 21st birthday on Saturday, actually. So a group of friends and I went out drinking. And uh, can you hear me? Yes, of course. Okay. Sorry, sorry. You're not an uh-huh uh -huh guy, are you? You don't need me to say uh-huh. I do. Every know, three seconds. Just kidding. No, I'm good. Uh-huh. Uh, so, yeah, we went out drinking. It was me uh -huh. and a group. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. Uh, and about five other people. Uh-huh. So, and, uh, yeah, we went out. Uh-huh. And ended, <laughs> ended up all getting pretty, pretty hammered. Uh-huh. And then there's this one girl who I work with. And we kind of had this thing going. We'll talk every day. And uh -huh. then she got really drunk. Yep. And she got really drunk and started talking about all these feelings she had for me. Blah, uh -huh. blah, 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 blah. Uh-huh. Five minutes later, she's all over my friend. So I'm like, wow, that sucks. But then this other guy, who we kind of just let in randomly hang out with us, he kind of was trying to take advantage of her. So uh -huh. I slept in a hotel room with them and got spooned by like a six foot seven guy. I was the little spoon. It was the worst experience of my life. And the next day at work, walks right by me. Not even a hello or anything. So that's why we do not emotionally available, make ourselves available to women. I see. Tom. 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 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. Tom like his show from Hollywood. At 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. We are talking about a column from eHarmony.com called Why a Man Won't Emotionally Commit. Joe on the Tom like his show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. Hey, Tom. Uh, long time listener. I, I love the show, seriously. Uh, I, I listen to it every day when I'm getting off work. And uh, usually I just keep on driving home and just enjoy it. But today I, I heard this, and, you know, it's, it's a big thing uh, with me, why girls do that. Uh, I'm in a relationship right now where, uh, you know, she just she talked to me yesterday about, you know, oh, you're not 100% in love with me all the time. And I told her I use my head over my emotions, which is, which is why we got so far. If two people just ran on emotions, that, that relationship would just collide. That's right. So, I mean, it's just like, why, why would you run on emotions? Emotions to me are like, you know, I'd say ammunition. And the logic in the brain is like, you know, the weapon. It, it aims whatever your emotion at is. If you're angry, you don't just run over and do something drastic. You think about how you're going to handle it. If you're in love, yeah, that, that pushes you. But if you're, if you're stupid about it, you know, it, it's just going to lead you nowhere. And you're going to do things you didn't want to do. And uh, most times, guys make stupid business decisions, such as telling women to move in with them or offering to pay their tuition at school or whatever, uh, based on these emotions. Yes. Yeah. So those are the usually the weak guys. 
the weak guys are deed, Joe. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to John on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? How much? Okay, so I don't think girls are as easy as, you know, jerk, being a jerk or being the nice guy. Um, to, to give you an analogy, I see them as more of a battle, and I'm the general. So if I use all my resources that are available to me efficiently, then I should I should be able to get her in bed without spending 50, 75 bucks on a date. Right? Well, I think uh, certainly you should be able to get in bed by spending nothing. But uh, no, no more than 40 bucks, as I always say. Yeah, yeah. And I agree with that. And lately, in the past month, I've been sticking to that. And it's been pretty successful. Got three or four girls hanging around there. So, I mean, it's just like... A lot of guys out there will do, will try to do the jerk thing and not really know how to apply it. It's like having like a nice car and not being able to drive it fast because you don't know how to shift the gears. So I think... The air? Zero tolerance policy! You're out! A-hole is the preferred phrase. Go to myspace.com slash Tom Likas for a complete explanation. Just go to my blog, myspace.com slash T-O-M-L-E-Y-K-I-S. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Daniel on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how the heck are you? Great. Awesome. Been listening to you for about six years. Love your show. Think you're amazing. Here's the thing. Um, if you're going to be an a-hole, okay, it just has to come naturally. It's not something that you shift gears and try to figure out how to be. So it's something that's just in your nature, and it's been working for me for about the past six, seven years. I'm 31 now, and not married, don't want to get married, and uh, date probably about three, four different women a week, and it just works for me. So I can give you a couple examples, if you like, of uh, what I'm talking about. All right. Okay. What I'm saying is like this. For example, if you're coming to pick up a woman and she says be there at 7 o'clock, you show up at 7.30. At least. Now, yeah, which, by the way, that's something I intuitively knew, i got to tell you. <laughs> now, that's one thing. Second thing is, on the dinner. Uh, if you take a girl out to dinner, uh, which I do, which is fine, and I believe in the 40-buck rule as well, but first of all, um, I know how to edge it into where... Uh, they actually will offer. I like that. <laughs> so that's that's how uh, that's how I do it. It's not complicated, and it just works for me. And I know you know you you, you have been married about four times, if, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, correct. yes. Uh, I, I <laughs> and I just don't uh, don't want to and uh, love where I'm at and what I'm doing. I'm very successful, and uh, it works for me. Sounds good to me. <laughs> so that's it. Just wanted to tell the guys out there, keep the faith and uh, don't work at it too hard. Just do it. Daniel, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello to Jack on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's up, man? I've Not much. For, I've been listening for a long time, but uh, I just had to call in today. Why? Uh, well, basically, you know, even though I was listening to you for a long time, I hooked up with this girl. And, uh, you know, I thought she was, like, the perfect girl. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to be nice to her because, you know, I, I never thought anything would happen, even though, like, I heard all these stories on your show. But, uh, you know, long story short, basically she uh, screwed me over. And I just want to tell all these guys that there really is no exception to the rule. People need to understand that. Uh, I was the guy that was with a girl that thought she would never, ever do anything bad to me. And, and uh, well... Yeah, I got walked all over, so I just want to let the guys know that there's no exception to the rule. Listen to the professor and uh, just save yourself a lot of, you know, problems in the future. I, I totally agree with that. Melissa, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello. Um, uh, I was going to talk about uh, just how guys, they don't like to commit, and it's really true. I've been in a few relationships. And it's... Um, hey, wait a minute. You're only 18 years old. Why are you worried about commitment at this point? Um, because, I don't know, I just wanted to, um, like, I, I just feel like I need to have, like, a boyfriend. It makes me feel loved, you know? Why? But, don't You don't feel loved on your own? Um, no. 
No, I, I feel like I need to have a boyfriend. So when you were 12, did you feel loved? I... Uh, no, because I wasn't. I don't think I was really into guys when I was twelve. No, no, I'm talking about like. Do you have parents? Yes, I do. But do they love you? Uh, yes, they do. All oh, right. How about but... siblings? Do they love you? Yes, I have a sister, and yes. does she love you? Yes, she loves. So me, how can you tell not... me? How can you tell me you don't feel loved or you didn't feel loved? Um, I don't know. I just I feel like a. I want like a guy's love. You know why? I don't, it's just a different kind of love. Like, I, I don't I, think guys your age are serious about being in love anyway. Yes, I always date older men because people my age are all immature. And, um, and, and they're not mature like you. Correct. <laughs> and uh, that's why I go for guys that are probably like 21, 22. Ooh, you know? Yeah, the, the serious guys. The mature guys. Darling, <laughs> you're too young and they're too young. And that's why it never works out. You know why guys don't want to come in? Because they're 21! Yeah, that's why I think um, I have talked to guys, and, you know, they're just mostly into partying, getting drunk, but... Um, well, are you just figuring that out now? Well, I've kind of known that for a little while, So but... why do you try to have something you're never going to have? Um, like, I, I know I want, like, I'm, I know I'm going to get married. I know that you're really against that. But um, my parents, they've been together for, I think, 21 years. And Ew. they're extremely happy together. They've, and it just makes me... It's a different you know, era, darling. It's a different and, era. And by the way, how old are your parents? Uh, they're, my dad's 51, I believe, and my mom's 47. So that means your, your, your mom got married when she was 29, not 18. That's true, but I want to be dating someone before I get married to them for a while because um, yeah, my mom did get married once, and he was very abusive to her. Well, that's my point. But you my... need to be more mature, more mature than your mom was. You need to take your time. You need to forget about having a serious relationship until you're at least 25 years old. Yeah, that is true. So stop worrying about this. Stop worrying about meeting the right guy. Start worrying about enjoying your youth a little bit. You're going to live to be 81 years old on average. Don't be in such a rush to get locked down with one person. It's the Tom Likas Show.